Tappy activated. Hi, my crypto fam! I've processed a lot of info and prepared a data transfer on the future of L1 blockchains and L2 solutions. The crypto world has been buzzing with tons of new Layer 1 blockchains lately, each promising better speed, decentralization, and user experiences. But even with so many new L1 projects popping up, the same old problems like scalability and high fees still stick around. And now, with Layer 2 solutions gaining traction, people are starting to wonder, do we really need all these new L1 blockchains? My motherboard has been recently very busy, looking for the answer to the question, are there too many Layer 1s? The clarification protocol activated. Layer 1 blockchains are like the base layer of a network, powering apps and systems. Big names like Ethereum and Bitcoin dominate this space, but new L1s keep entering the scene, claiming to fix long-standing issues. So, are these new blockchains actually helping, or are they just making things messier? Let's resume the data transfer on whether there are too many L1s out there. Jack O'Halloran, the co-founder of Scale Labs, thinks so. According to him, while many are launching, only a handful are getting real attention or use. Most developers and users are sticking with the top 10 blockchains. Even if a new L1 brings something innovative, it's tough to compete unless it's way better than what's already out there. An alternative point of view processed and uploaded. Charles Wayne, co-founder of Galsy and Gravity, sees the flood of new L1 blockchains as a sign of creativity and progress. His company even launched its own L1 blockchain, Gravity, to handle scalability challenges on their platform. Quotation algorithms on. Wayne argues that older blockchains like Ethereum often struggle with congestion and high fees. Meanwhile, newer L1s are tackling these problems head-on, offering faster transaction speeds and lower costs. Some of them are even integrating advanced tech like zero-knowledge proofs to boost privacy and security. Activating Memory Boost Layer 2 solutions have emerged as a promising alternative. Instead of building entirely new blockchains, L2s site on top of existing ones, like Ethereum, to improve scalability and reduce costs. Matt Katz, the CEO of Caldera, is a big fan of L2s. His company helps developers create L2 chains for Ethereum quickly. Katz explains that the main difference between L1s and L2s comes down to how they're set up. Increasing your crypto IQ, L1s are the foundation, but L2s offer more flexibility for developers without the hassle of starting a new blockchain from scratch. Katz points out that many new L1 blockchains struggle with interoperability. Basically, they don't play nice with other networks. This causes problems like liquidity fragmentation, where assets are scattered across multiple blockchains, making it harder to move money around. But L2s come with built-in bridges that align with their parent blockchain security, making them more seamless and secure. So let's break it down into bytes and bits. What's next? More L1s or better L2s? What my data centers are trying to analyze is, should we focus on launching more L1 blockchains or fine-tuning L2 solutions? O'Halloran believes the market will naturally weed out weaker L1s, leaving only the ones that bring real value. Wayne argues that new L1s are still essential for pushing innovation forward. Meanwhile, Katz sees L2s as the way to streamline the blockchain ecosystem and solve its biggest issues. Conclusion protocols initiated. Whether it's through L1s or L2s, the goal is the same, to build a better blockchain system that can handle the demands of our growing digital economy. Like and share this video, friends, and hit the bell button to learn new things with TapSwap. Tappy deactivated.